So if we run a tight ship around these parts, I think we're going to go ahead and, and uh, kick things off. So uh, first and foremost, welcome to the Commuter Programs Drive the Bottom Line webinar. Um, we're going to give uh, everyone just a couple moments, more moments to get settled in. Um, but while we're doing that, I will go ahead and do a quick introduction of myself. So uh, my name is Paul Straw. I'm with Go Triangle. I'm part of the Sustainable Travel Services team. I'm a coordinator, and I'm also a Share the Ride and See system administrator. So some of y'all might know me from that world. Um, I will be your host and moderator today. So thank you to everyone who's joined us. Uh, I'd like to give a special thank you to our regional chambers, business membership organizations, and the sustainable transportation community that helped spread the word about this webinar today. And then before getting into today's presentation, we do have a, a few little housekeeping items to address. Um, first and foremost, today's session is being recorded, and we will make sure to share this recording. Uh, usually we have it posted to YouTube within 24 to 48 hours, so it's wonderful if you can join us, but we know sometimes people can't, or maybe you might have to leave a little bit early, um, so we will have that recording posted soon. And also be sure to stick around to the end for a chance to win a $25 gift card. Um, so, as mentioned, um, um, or as you know, we are in Zoom, and so uh, Zoom, we have it set up in webinar mode today, so you don't have to worry about uh, your cameras being on or muting yourselves or, or your microphones. Um, attendees will be encouraged to ask questions throughout the webinar, uh, and please use the Q&A button, as you can see on the screen. Uh, it's located in your Zoom toolbar. Um, you can send chat messages, but sometimes those get a little bit lost in the shuffle, um, so the Q&A button will be your best option. We will try our best to answer most questions through the panelist conversation that we're going to have. Uh, we do have a special guest today, Sarah Saylor. Um, she will also be able to provide text-based responses. So if you see her in the panelist list and if you see Sarah responding to you, it's just to help make sure we get all questions answered to the best of our ability. But we will have panelists tackle some of those questions. Um, lastly, we do have um, live transcription services are enabled and subtitles can be shown by accessing the live transcript option in your toolbar. Um, I wanted to ensure that you knew more about the services offered through our regional employer services program. Through employer services, we offer transportation expertise and complementary assistance to businesses, residential communities, and commercial properties to give them a competitive edge and to help improve transportation amenities and commuter benefits. These services and programs significantly impact commuting patterns, traffic congestion, personal health, and air quality uh, in transportation agencies in the Triangle. Our, our funding, our grant funded services, programs, and materials are provided through a partnership between municipalities and public transportation agencies. The services and outcomes are referred to as transportation demand management or TDM. So please visit gotriangle.org slash employer hyphen services to learn more. And I'd also like to uh, um, thank our TDM partners and different committee members. A, a tremendous amount of work goes into um, these regional webinars that we put together. Um, some of you might have seen some of our Mission Impossible series webinars. Yeah. And so yeah, we could not do that without the support of our regional Triangle Transportation yeah. Choices uh, Program members. Um, also, I'm getting a little bit of background noise. If, if uh, panelists can mute themselves just to be on the safe side, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, let me specifically call out and thank some of our regional partners, we have Way to Go Durham and the City of Durham. There's Commute Smart Raleigh in the City of Raleigh, Research Triangle Park, RTP, Go Chapel Hill, Wake County, and Go Triangle. Additionally, thank you to our university partners. That includes North Carolina Central University, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Wake Tech, NC State University, and Duke University. Uh, lastly, a really big thank you to our funders and program administrators. That includes the NC Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, or CAMPO, the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough Metropolitan Planning Organization, DCHC, North Carolina Department of Transportation, the NCDO team, and the Triangle J Council of Governments. And lastly, a special thank you to our um, planning committee members. That includes Chris Holloway commute with Commute with Enterprise, Vanessa Battle with Go Triangle, Mason Chambly with the Commute Smart Raleigh team. Um, so leading up to this webinar, we promoted van pooling as a way to widen an employer's recruitment radius, reduce employee turnover, and improve their carbon footprint. Um, our esteemed panelists today uh, will be here to discuss this, but before I introduce them, I thought we should do a couple of things. Um, first, I'm going to launch a poll, and let me see if I can actually do this successfully here. 
Um, so yeah, you should have a poll popping up in front of you now. Uh, we just wanted to learn a, a little bit about your organization's familiarity with van pooling or if you have van pool services. So if everyone can take just a few seconds. We're not going to have this open very long. Um, and then after we get these poll question responses in, we're going to watch a quick video. I see everyone's clicking through. We're at 75% participation. That's great. Let's see if we can maybe get it to 80 just another second here. All right, so that, that looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and end that. We're going to share these results just so everybody knows. It doesn't pop up on my screen, but yeah, looks like a, a good healthy amount of, of everyone who's joining us today um, has a van pool program. Many of you have subsidies, so um, very interesting to see. So thank, thank you for taking a few moments to do that. And let's jump into the video. I started van pooling about the time my wife decided to stay home with our youngest child, um, probably about seven years ago. Uh, we were looking for ways to save money. I like uh, riding in the van pool. It's better because it's more economical. It's less wear and tear on myself and my car. I have the same car that I had when I started driving a van pool. It's now a classic, but I would not have had that car if I had to drive it to work. With the number of houses that have gone up, I suspect there's gonna be a lot more traffic and a lot more folks are gonna look for options to not have to sit in traffic for an hour each way to work. And I love where I live, but that drive day after day really gets on, gets to you. So it's nice to have an alternate. Uh, we've had a core group of individuals that have been with us uh, well over uh, 10 years. And one of the great things about it is, is that it becomes a community. Some of us still get together, especially around Christmas time, and have food together and fellowship. And we just always have kept in touch. You know, you got company and it's always something going on in the van pool. It's fun. People are telling jokes. You know, we listen to the radio. We laugh. Um, we care about each other's lives. We interact with each other. And uh, it's a pleasant way to spend an hour coming to and from work. It's, it's great to take cars off the road. It's great to reduce emissions. But at the end of the day, you're saving money, and I think that that's what drives a lot of folks to choose uh, van pooling. Fantastic. Um, that video, it is posted on the Go Triangle YouTube channel. I will be sure to share that link here in just a little bit. Uh, you can learn more also by visiting the gotriangle.org slash van pool page, of course. Um, all right, so I think this is what we're here for. Um, to kick things off, I'm going to introduce Chris Holloway. We have four panelists today, as many of you had seen on the invite. So I'm going to um, just do one intro at a time and then give each panelist a chance to just give a quick overview of some of the services that they provide. And then we're actually going to open it up for the um, panelist discussion portion of the webinar. But um, yeah, to kick things off, Chris Holloway he is a Durham native who attended Appalachian State for uh, college and has been working in transportation since 2017. As a representative from Commute with Enterprise, he works with businesses, federal and military entities, and local transit agencies to develop and expand commuter programs. When he is not working with organizational leaders on changing how their employees commute to work, he enjoys playing music, staying active, and traveling. And I can attest to we do have a rock star with us today. So, Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate the introduction. Um, so as we get into this uh, slide deck here, the, the focus is to give some information on van pooling, uh, but as well discuss why companies are pursuing commuter programs, how it impacts individuals at their organizations, and has a positive impact on the community. Uh, Paul, would you be willing to go to the next slide? I'm going to start by talking about some of the, the reasons that organizations pursue commuter programs. We'll then talk at a high level of what Commute with Enterprise is, how it works for individuals van pooling, and what a number of companies see as the benefits from this type of program. And then we'll touch on some of the tools that we use to equip HR leaders and uh, organizations with a means of creating this type of program at their work site. Um, so talking about companies pursuing commuter programs, uh, oftentimes, We've been, we've been seeing how talent is really, uh, you know, kind of been sought after and whether it's the tech markets here in Raleigh, the pharmaceutical industries here, or if we're talking about manufacturing and frontline employees, there's really been a challenge for folks to, you know, maintain their workforce. 
And what we've seen is a, a shift for companies trying to enhance their employees' well-being and provide additional benefits, whether that's child care, um, flexible hours, or providing commuter assistance through something like a van pool program. Paul, would you go to the next slide, please? So Commute with Enterprise has been working in the van pool space for a little bit over 40 years. And it all started when uh, over in California, there was a group of folks who were needing a, a, a vehicle to commute to and from their work site. And that's when we started working with van pooling. Since then, a lot has changed. We've actually expanded out into 48 states and have just under 9,000 van pools. Um, and the impact of this program is huge. It's actually eliminating over a billion commuter miles. Um, Paul, would you go to the next slide? I think van pooling is a word that, uh, you know, when I heard it for the first time as a Durham native, I was a little bit confused. What, is it, what all does van pooling mean? Um, and really what it looks like is a carpool on steroids. Uh, it's, it's getting a group of folks who share a similar commute and likely start in a similar area, like a neighborhood or a part of town. They meet up at a central location and then they drive to and from the work site, sharing the driving responsibilities and the cost. Um, along with that, they actually get to select their vehicle based on their group, uh, anything from a seven-seater SUV, a minivan, all the way up to a 15-passenger. And keep in mind, the goal of this is for them to experience less friction while they're on the road. If you're in the, in the triangle area, I know RTP is one of my headaches when I'm driving to and from uh, work. And really save money, save time, and decrease stress. Paul, would you go to the next slide, please? I think when uh, the, the phrase carpool on steroids is thrown out, there's a little bit of need to back that up. It's a strong claim. Um, and what that means to us is ensuring that when, when there's a van pool group started, we want all the amenities at that group's fingertips. And that really starts with the vehicle itself. This is, unlike with carpooling, this is going to be a vehicle dedicated to that group for their commute. And being a part of Enterprise Holdings, we're actually able to select low model, uh, low mileage, late model vehicles that have all kinds of safety efficiencies, fuel efficiencies, and really uh, ride in style. Uh, I know when I was working with Enterprise before working in this van pool space, I drove a 99 Civic to and from work. It would shut off on the highway sometimes, and it caused me a lot of stress and anxiety. Something like this van pool program where you have a late model vehicle that removes those stresses can have a huge impact. Uh, beyond that, we make sure that all the maintenance is covered through us. Uh, groups are able to go to any of the local vendors that partner with Enterprise, scan the key tag, and it's billed directly to us. Uh, we have 24-hour roadside uh, for the times where you may not be able to contact someone like myself or our operator who can assist with issues like that. And Essentially, it's for your folks who are traveling for late shifts. Uh, basically, we have you covered uh, when there's a popped tire, things of that nature. And I think some of our panelists may be able to speak in more detail to that. Um, one of my favorite features in this program is that there's comprehensive insurance. In the event of any damages to the vehicle, we cover it at no deductible to the riders. Additionally, there's a million dollars of liability included so that when folks are riding in the van pool, that they don't have any increased share of responsibility from any of the other drivers. There's not a, a financial component uh, or concern for those folks. Um, in addition to that, we do provide flexibility. As we've worked with uh, employees across a number of different verticals, we've seen things change. You know, if you get a promotion and your schedule changes, we, we don't want to try and uh, you know, limit the flexibility of these participants. So we offer month-to-month -month flexibility. If there's a change in, you know, your commuting needs, we, we just ask for advance notice of 30 days so that that change can be distributed amongst the group. All right, Paul, would you go to the next slide? When we're talking about employers, uh, before going into some of the, the goals that they have around this, I wanted to touch on that insurance idea and kind of the risk component, because many times employers don't know how this type of program would interact with their exposure. Uh, the great part about this is that employees are commuting to and from uh, the, the work site outside the time of work. 
Um, and our program is voluntary. Drivers aren't being paid or, or mandated to do this by their company. It's a mere fringe benefit. Um, and what that means is that there's not an increase in exposure for the employer uh, when it's set up correctly. Talking about why employers choose to, to incorporate a benefit like this, there's a myriad of reasons. Um, especially over the last two years, many HR leaders pursue this for the goal of making it easier to retain folks. Uh, especially when there's someone who's driving 45 minutes from uh, Chapel Hill all the way to the other side of Raleigh, they're passing a number of employers. And if you're stuck in traffic, you might even have more time to think about that. If you're able to help those folks have less stress on their daily commute, save money, and maybe develop closer relationships with their coworkers, we've seen great impacts on talent management for, for various companies. When we talk about parking spaces, uh, this is something that you'll see in downtown Raleigh or downtown Durham, where there's not a great deal of parking in these metro areas where there's a, a, a sense of excitement and a lot going on between all these different organizations. And having folks ride together to and from the worksite is a great way to gain all the benefits that we've mentioned already for those employees, but also lower your parking needs. Um, as a part of that idea of contributing to the community, um, we're able to help get single occupancy vehicles off the road and lower the number of cars getting stuck in traffic every day. So doing this as an organization is not only gonna help your employees as well as your bottom line, it, it's also something that helps out the community. Of course, this has uh, kind of been reiterated a number of times, but this is a huge way to help employees save. Companies are able to subsidize this program and drive down the cost for their employees or merely act as a connector to help employees find a, a commuting group so that they can benefit from the savings. Um, this type of program is something that we monitor on a, on a quarterly basis and provide sustainability impacts relating to the scope three emissions of an organization. What that means is for the employee commutes. We're able to track those impacts, provide them to companies so that they can be used in sustainability reports, corporate responsibility documents, uh, ISO 14001 certifications, or LEED certifications. All of this really ties into the idea of corporate citizenship and how companies can really be better partners, not only with their employees, investors, but as well the community that they're a part of. Um, when we talk about equitable rides to work, uh, this is something that has come into play when we talk about transportation barriers. Uh, when there are folks who may not have the same transportation capabilities, they may not have the same options for work. Uh, let's say there's someone living in a metro area and there's a rural employer that has a higher paying opportunity, but they may not have their own vehicle. A program like this can be used not only on a company level, but by a city or county to help provide resources to connect folks who don't have transportation with jobs that are higher paying and unavailable to them without a resource like this or other transit options. Paul, would you go to the next slide? One of the things that our program does a great job with is leading with insight. When we engage with companies, one of the practices we have is using analysis to find out how these vans can be created, not only to, to make the process easier, but to make the outcomes better. We take a basically employee address mapping and we find out without using personal information, who could be an ideal van pool rider. We have the ability to customize that to your organization's uh, likings, whether there's a certain radius trying to target folks further out, or if we're just doing a holistic review of the GIS mapping for employees, understanding how the, the workforce ch changes over shifts, or we see different distributions uh, for your recruitment insights and things of that nature. Uh, Paul, could you go to the next slide? To give a quick overview of how companies partner with us and create this type of benefit, it starts by the analysis, understanding where employees are, where the opportunities are to assist with the employee commute, deciding what this benefit will look like if your company decides to contribute towards this or merely help connect folks, 
and how you want to roll that out. Oftentimes companies have their, their internal communications very well understood, whether it's a message board that works best or a Facebook group. Uh, sometimes different forms of media are more well received based on your workforce. So we work to understand your company and how the heartbeat of your organization, and then merely just provide messaging to help spread awareness on this. After that, most of the work is done. It's merely helping connect these riders and then planning the delivery of the vehicles. After that is the fun part where we come back on a quarterly basis and ensure that we're moving towards the goals that you had when you set out to create a commuter benefit. We do this in a very customized fashion based on the goals of each individual organization and really strive to make sure that we're moving towards your goals. Paul, would you go to the next slide? I think we're completed here. That is it. Yeah, fantastic. I, I, I love the, the terminology, just carpool on steroids. I think we were even this close to calling the, uh, the webinar that, but it really does highlight the, you know me, I love getting people into carpools. That's kind of what I do. Um, but I think um, uh, uh, calling it that is highlights the strength of, of the regional van pool program. So perfect. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So we're on to our next panelist. Um, Philip Walker transferred to the Durham VAMC on January 2nd, 2022 and works as a human resource specialist. He has worked at several sections under the department of veterans affair in different states, uh, veterans benefits administration, veterans health administration, and now the veterans administration medical center. One of his job responsibilities is maintaining the VA transit subsidy participant program. And I'm gonna hand it on over to you, Philip. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, the um, Department of Transportation actually um, um, had the benefit for all federal employees, which is called the VA transit, transit benefit program. Um, pretty, pretty much you, you enroll into the program through me and um, I, I submit your um, application to the um, Nat National VA. They send it over to the Department of Transportation and you are actually issued a Visa credit card from Citibank. They will load $270 on your card every month so that you can um, pay for um, um, the van pools, um, you can catch the local transportation, such as buses, light rails, et cetera. Um, I can say um, I have two employees enrolled who catches Amtrak from Charlotte and Greensboro. So again, um, um, Citibank will um, issue a Visa go uh, a Visa credit card in, um, in seven to ten days. Um, this program it works well. Um, my previous um, VAs I, I worked at that that had a strong transportation system. Um, the the majority of our employees were enrolled in a transportation program to actually get a bus pass, monthly bus pass, to to take the public transportation. I can say um, I worked at the Salisbury VA in Charlotte. And we had a large presence um, of enterprise van pools as well. Um, we pretty much had a parking lot full of vans from from um, enterprise that employees participated in. Um, and again, this is, is a federal bit, bit, bit benefit. Um, okay, um, we can go to the next slide. Okay, and this is um, the federal employees that that actually qualify for the programs. I guess um, it, it'll be like foreign foreign language to most people, but pretty much uh, doctors wouldn't be able to to participate in this program at the VA Medical Center. Only Title Five and some Title Thirty Eight employees. Um, it's a program I am promoting. Quite often at the dorm VA, again, I started in dorm in January and I am trying to get um, several or many employees enrolled in the program. One, because of um, um, we have a parking situation going on um, where it's hard for our veterans to park because we have um, employees parking there. And also um, we have a lot of employees that do not live in a dorm area and they live further out and this program would actually be good for them. 
Um, next slide, I believe this is the next slide, if anyone has questions. Perfect. Yeah, I think we'll we'll jump into some of the Q and A portion here in just a little bit. But um, yeah, I'm really glad you had mentioned the um, parking demands. I know that's one of the um, biggest motivators for why organizations and individuals start to explore van pulling as a solution. So um, I think tapping into how the, that impacts the Durham VA uh, will be relevant to a lot of the attendees today. Um, so yeah, thank you, Philip. Um, so next, jumping into our next panelist, the um, uh, Nathan Daly has over 31 years of progressive management experience in the pharmaceutical industry. During his uh, tenure, he has managed the discipline of sterile filling, TS filling, production planning, materials management, site power of attorney, direct and indirect procurement, strategic sourcing, and most recently, contract management. Nathan currently serves on the board of directors for the Triangle Chapter of the Institute of Supply Management, ISM. Nathan joined Griffles Therapeuticals, LLC, in 2006 and has served as the manager of strategic sourcing and was recently promoted to the role of associate director of contract management. Nathan has participated in the Griffles sponsored Go Triangle commuter program over 10 years. And I'm about to hand it over to you, Nathan, but I will uh, preface this by saying uh, as we were going into the planning stages, everyone said we need to get Nathan uh, uh, to, to join us for this panelist today. So we're really excited to hear from you. <laughs> And I don't have okay, any thank you. So I'll just turn off the I'll stop the screen. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, I work in uh, at Griffles Therapeutics in Clayton, and I live in Wake Forest. Um, so it's roughly 20, 26 miles one way to work. So I have been in the van pool, a participant in the van pool, a beneficiary of the van pool for uh, over 10 years now, and um, can't say enough good things about it. Everything from the way the program is administered um, to um, everyone who joins the van pool. We currently have four participants. We have a 2020 Nissan Pathfinder. It's a very comfortable vehicle. And as Christopher Holloway, I think he described it very well when he said, you know, all the amenities at your fingertips. And we have certainly experienced that. I've experienced that for over 10 years now. So anything we need, any the maintenance, uh, there are national agreements in place, so it's very easy to get the vehicle maintained. Um, the gas cards that are supplied, it's very easy to fuel. Um, all of the administrative um, duties, uh, I am the leaseholder for this vehicle. I am the uh, coordinator for this group. And so everything that I need from an administrative standpoint is just handled seamlessly and is very easy to interact with. So. Um, it's, it's fun, you know, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but it's fun. You get to know people from your work area that you wouldn't normally uh, get to interact with. So I've learned all kinds of really cool things in different departments. Uh, we have regulatory represented and it's just really interesting to talk to folks. Um, it's a very comfortable ride. We, um, you know, have rarely experienced any kind of issues. We had, we, we did have a, a, a screw in one of the tires at one time and it pretty much leveled it, but it was very easy to get it fixed. Um, and we had a replacement vehicle. So again, um, I can't say enough good things about the program. The only question, the most common question I'm asked when we have someone join the van pool is, why isn't everybody doing this? And I don't have an answer for that other than, <laughs> you know, I have a 2016 Honda CRV and it has 55,000 miles on it. So there are just so many positives in the program. Your, your own vehicle wear and tear is reduced. Um, the comfort of the ride is superior. The maintenance and everything are take, you know, it's just taken care of. And also a benefit people aren't aware of. If you contact your insurance provider and you let them know you're in a van pool program, and as Chris mentioned, you know, the liability and the risk that insurance is covered, that can also potentially, depends on your provider, reduce your uh, auto insurance. So in my case, it did. It reduced my auto insurance. So there are just many, many residuals that uh, just benefits that are just uh, just embedded in the program. So again, uh, I don't hang around in programs I don't like. I'm going to hang around this one as long as it'll let me. So anyway, that's my, I guess that's my little uh, bailiwick there. 
That's fantastic to hear. Um, yeah, I've heard good things. Nathan is the champion of champions and, and when it comes to van pulling and so living up to all the hype. Uh, so thank you, Nathan. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hand it over to Sam. Sam Vetter began his career in 1988 as a chemist for the Armour uh, Pharmaceutical Company in Bradley, Illinois. Three years later, he was asked to move into a newly created environmental engineer position. In 2005, he joined Talacris Biotherapy therapeutics, hopefully I'm getting all these right, uh, now Griffles Therapeutics in Clayton, North Carolina, as part of the environmental department. He is responsible for waste reduction initiatives, wastewater management, wildlife habitat, ISO 14001 conformance, greenhouse gas emissions tracking, eco-efficiency monitoring, circular economic efforts, and encouraging the decarbonization of mobility, including van pulling and encouraging the use of electric vehicles. He has worked with Enterprise and Griffles Management to encourage Griffle employees to Vanpool by providing encouragement, information, support, and subsidies uh, to Vanpools commuting to and from Griffles, North Carolina locations. Uh, so, Sam, I'm going to hand it over to you. Well, thank you, Paul. That was quite a mouthful. <laughs> As you said, I've been here with, with Griffles now for uh, 17 years. Actually, next week will be my 17-year anniversary. But... Um, you know, as a large pharmaceutical manufacturing manufacturer, um, we seek to be a um, a good environmental steward as well as a good social steward, and you know all these ESG things that are becoming more and more prominent. Um, you know, we seek to um, be um, in that ballpark and uh, and participating in these things. And so, um, you know, we started supporting van pooling, well, as Nathan says, over 10 years ago, because he's been doing it. Um, and, um, and the company has provided um, subsidies to our employees. It's, it's made um, the commute almost um, free for folks like Nathan, that um, between the Go Triangle or the, the, the Raleigh area subsidies that are available, as well as the, um, the company subsidy that, that Griffles provides. And so, um, oh. you know, this really helped out. Uh, we've also put in, uh, you know, charging stations for EVs and things like that as part of our environmental uh, objectives to, you know, keep pollutants down to keep parking spaces available. Uh, the, the van pools get some some premier parking spaces, uh, as well as the, the EV vehicles that come in need to be charged. They have close up to the building as we've expanded over the 17 years that I've been here. Um, you know, parking has become further and further away from from offices, and yet uh, those who participate in the van pool, um, you know, they have um, premier parking area to park in. So it's it's an effort on on Griffel's part, and particularly on part of my boss David Oje, um, to to really um, lead the pack rather than than follow. No. And if, if that's it, I think, um, and, and I appreciate that update. That's that's Thank fantastic. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Let me do one more share screen. And um, when it comes to van pulling, I think one thing we all know about this is that there's a lot of questions. And so as we were developing uh, the content for this webinar, we wanted to hear from our, our experts, especially local regional experts. And so that was really important for us. But we also knew that there are so many questions that come along with um, van pulling that we really wanted to have an opportunity to have a panelist discussion. And so we're going to transition more now from kind of a presentation style into a conversation style um, where we can pick these experts' brains on all the details specific to van pulling. Um, so I've seen, I've seen some questions coming in. So thank you very much to everyone who has submitted them so far. Keep them coming in. Um, uh, I know a lot of times as you hear questions being asked, that might prompt you to think of another question to ask that's relevant to that. So keep them coming in. We will do our best to answer as many as we can today. And then we will follow up as necessary um, um, to make sure all questions get answered. Uh, but yeah, I think to kick things off, um, 
I'd like to start by addressing um, the importance of improving air quality and reducing traffic through smart commuting behavior. That's something very important to, uh, to our organization and the, a lot of the TDM partners that we have. So this question I think is mostly either for Philip or Sam, either one of you feel free to chime in. Um, but we promoted this webinar by asking our audience, are you looking for an improved carbon footprint and congestion mitigation? And I think a lot of people joined us today because they probably are. So how has van pulling or how has your van pulling program accomplished these goals of in, your improved carbon footprint or that reduced congestion or congestion mitigation? Um, and also maybe what metrics do you use to determine your success? And I'll just open up to either, either of you or anyone. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We can all see each other. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in a little bit here. Um, our corporate folks are very interested in our um, green, our footprint, environmental footprint and things like that. And so I have to provide data every year on uh, miles commuted. They want to know miles commuted by um, car, miles commuted by train, by bicycle, by motorcycle, by uh, bus, and uh, number of employee or miles walked to work. Now we're out in Clayton and uh, we don't have train service. We don't have bus service. Um, very, very few of our employees would live close enough to walk to work or even to bicycle to work. And so the only numbers we really have are motorcycles and cars. And, you know, this van pooling really helps us out to reduce the, um, the, emissions, the fuel consumed, et cetera, uh, associated with, with folks coming to work. Uh, our corporate folks, you know, they're, they're headquartered in Barcelona, Spain, an entirely different um, situation. You know, they've got uh, bus systems, they've got train systems and, and uh, light rail and stuff like that, but, but we don't have any of that here. And so van pooling really helps us out. Okay, I would say on um, the Department of Transportation side, um, the main reasons, well, a few of the main reasons why this program is actually out there is to keep less vehicles on the road, the carbon, and also to subsidize the public transportation systems. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, our, our corporate folks are asking these questions because it all comes down to what are your, your emissions due to employees getting back and forth to work. Absolutely. I appreciate your responses. Um, this, this could maybe be opened up for everyone as well, but I think also thinking of it from the employer perspective, this is something that we've already gotten questions about, uh, numerous times in advance. And so just to jump right into it, um, what COVID or, you know, various illness protocols does your organization adhere to, um, concerning van pool management? Um, are there van pool protocols that are maybe different than maybe office or building protocols that you might have? Um, so yeah, whoever whoever uh, uh, wants to tackle that one, I know it's an important one for our audience today, though. I can I can tackle that from our van pool, and uh, the way we handle that is basically if if you are not feeling well, if if you are running a temperature, um, we uh, encourage our folks if you're in that situation to to just stay home. Um, it's a very confined environment, and we we don't want to expose people unnecessarily to to viruses or COVID or RSV or flu, uh, which seem to be really going crazy right now. So that that's the protocol that we follow. And for a while, we did shut down the van pools when when the COVID pandemic first started. This, um, this was a question that was submitted by Arlene Metter. So thank you, Arlene. And I, I think it taps into what we're talking about here. As employees have been returning to the office, oh no, the question disappeared. <laughs> um, for some reason, Zoom just got rid of the question. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, go yeah, off here. Um, as, oh, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think that might've been uh, answered in the Q and A, um, but kind of talking more so on the triangle level and what we've seen here is that, 
you know, before the pandemic, oftentimes band pool programs were used in a white collar space as an added benefit. Um, and oftentimes we're seeing that that was shifted more into a focus on hybrid or flexible schedules for the staff that are able to. Um, many of the organizations that we worked with prior to Van Pool or the pandemic um, are, are working to bring folks back into the office, but it's, it's looking different for each and every one of them. And it's shaping up as kind of a gradual shift for most, um, you know, starting to add occasional days in the office, maybe adding additional ones. Um, and on our side, we're trying to work with those employers to find a way that that makes sense for them to support this, but also doesn't uh, involve the employees coming in every day with this service. Um, so it's it's definitely looking a little bit different uh, post pandemic, but I think it's resulting in employees having a, an added level of flexibility. And I'm kind of curious from, I guess, fill up from your perspective with the Durham VA, I think the, you know, operations of a facility like yours is different than um, probably many other organizations. How have, uh, you know, how, how have your pre COVID van pools versus kind of now in this sort of, you know, maybe not quite post COVID, but this world have, have the numbers stayed, um, um, fairly in line with themselves or how has things changed over time for you? Yeah, um, when, whenever COVID came out, again, um, I recently just got to dorm in January of this year. However, um, we sent a lot of employees home to work. Um, they were pretty much on a telework agreement. I'm sure um, we lost some some staff on, on, on the van pools, but the van pools continued to run. Am I correct, Chris? Um, as far as as the the COVID policies, we're working for the VA hospital. Um, the participants on the van pool, if they're six feet within each other, they should be wearing a mask. But I don't know, so I don't. And you know, I don't ride for them, so I'm not sure if they're following policy. Gotcha. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so to jump into another question, this one's kind of open-ended and broad, but but Chris, uh, I think I wanted to pick your brain a little bit. So what have been the biggest challenges that you've experienced when it comes to just launching a new Vanpool program? Uh, I know that's kind of an open-ended question, but I'd love to hear like, what, what are the stumbling blocks that you encounter the most frequently? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, when, when there's folks who we work with in an organization who are excited and interested in doing this, uh, it, it works really well. Um, I think some of the times where I see the launch of the, the Van Pool program working best is when folks are, are actually able to hand off some of the responsibilities to me as far as engaging, uh, coming on site and setting up a table, uh, engaging with specific van pool groups, um, kind of doing the work together um, has been really helpful because I see it as I, I'm, I'm the van pool guy. I may not know XYZ company culture, but if we pair that knowledge together and we know what your company's aiming towards, that's when there's really a great level of success. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, all right, so Nathan, a question for you. Um, so I think this kind of gets into some of the logistical elements of, of actually what it means to be in a van pool. Uh, but Vanessa Battle had asked us, um, where do you and your participants of the van pool meet to board each day? Can you kind of walk us through maybe what that daily van pool experience is like, just kind of how you organize where you meet up, what that experience looks like from your perspective? Uh, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> so we decided to meet um, at a uh, strip mall uh, that was convenient to everybody. And I got with the property owner um, and it's in the parking lot of a CVS. So got with a CVS store owner as well, got their permission to do it. We all agreed upon it. That was the best place. So we all convened there at an agreed upon time in the morning. And then um, just like Sam was saying, uh, at, at Griffles, the Van Pool program has a uh, premier parking place uh, right next to the building. So um, we all park there and we um, have, a, have an agreed upon time that we all meet back at the van and then um, I guess commute home 
commute home from there. Um, is it like clockwork? Is it like on the minute? Um, no, there are issues. Um, there are things that come up and um, we as a group have been able to to address those. Um, you know, if someone's working in a late meeting, it's gonna be 10, 15 minutes late, of course, we'll work with, with folks. Um, and it, you know, someone may, may be running late, they have a sick child, they need to get somewhere or something, you know, we, it's, it's flexibility is the key. So um, I hope that answers the question, but yeah, we have an agreed upon meeting place and um, we have a premier parking space at, at work. Fantastic. That actually teased me up for a question I was going to ask a little bit later down the line, but I think now feels like an uh, opportune moment. So this is for Chris. This is kind of a softball question coming from me, but um, what what plans um, does a van pool need to know in case they have an emergency? Are there programs or are there services that they could utilize in case an unexpected emergency pops up uh, where somebody needs to get home and the van pool maybe cannot? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, actually through Go Triangle, there's a program called the Emergency Ride Home Program. Um, it's it's really essential, not only for van pool, for, but for all commuting modes where you don't have, you know, your own vehicle involved. Um, and, and what that does is if let's say we all van pool to our work site and I, I have a, a kid sick at school that I need to pick up and take home. Um, instead of having all of us leave on a dime and, and really have an impact on everyone's work, uh, I'm actually able to go through Share the Ride NC, uh, which, which you want to register for in advance when you join a van pool and get a taxi service um, to get me back home. It's called Emergency Ride Home. It's available up to six times per year per participant. And it's really for flexibility. You know, I think for folks who are more comfortable driving in their own vehicle, this is a really great stopgap where you have flexibility uh, when, when the unexpected happens. Now, you know, I love the emergency ride home program. I, I kind of administer it on my end. So I'm, I'm glad you had a chance to talk about it. Um, all right. So I'm going to um, toss this one out, I think, to, to Sam, if you don't mind. Um, as an organization that has embraced van pulling, what advice would you give to other organizations um, who, who are considering van pulling or maybe they haven't considered it and they need a nudge in that direction? What are what are your words of wisdom? <laughs> I guess one of the things is if you can get your uh, HR folks to agree to give you um, addresses or zip codes or something for the your your uh, employee base, you know, to do a determination of where are the pockets of employees in in a concentration large enough to um, to be realistic for a van pool. You know, the, the data that you can accumulate. Um, is, is essential so that um, you really know what you're you're getting into and uh, and what's realistic. Uh, you will you will find employees like Nathan who are just gung ho on it, and then you'll find employees who you know really have no interest or will say, "Well, I'm interested, but," and um, you know. I've got kids in school. I've got, you know, a weird work schedule. Um, and, and for us, you know, not only do we have office employees who work Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five, eight to five, but um, being a manufacturing facility, we've also got um, shift employees. Um, a lot of them work 12 hour shifts. They, they flip flop every couple of weeks between days and nights. Um, so a lot of those details, if you can get that data up front, you know, that will really help you out. Fantastic. Um, and I think, um, Philip, I'm going to toss this one out to you. I don't think anyone can chime in as well. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe multiple responses could be good to hear from this, but um, how does your organization, how does the Durham VA promote van pooling? And I guess what communication methods have been the most successful? Do you think, is it emailing? Is it, is it tabling? Is it getting, you know, Chris out there to inform individuals? Where have you seen the most success with the Durham VA? Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I was just thinking of that. Um, we have a daily Durham, um, which is sent out daily with announcements on there. Um, and I'll send an uh, email um, with the van pool information. 
and um, at least two or three times a month. And it's just a blast to um, say, hey, I'm looking for van, van, van pool riders for a specific area, or they can join an ongoing um, van, van pool that's in operation already, or you can inquire with people within your city to start a new van pool. So um, I do that about two or three times a month. Uh, fantastic. Um, and so I think, Chris, maybe this is one we can have you explore a little bit. I, I know there's been some additional questions concerning subsidies. Um, I've seen some of the questions posted that are maybe asking a little bit about and maybe the calling it incentives or what incentives are being offered, but uh, even tax breaks, government grants. I know there's a lot of different ways to talk about the the subsidizing of van pools and to make it more economically viable for our audience. So can you can you tap into a little bit of of what options are available um, from from your perspective? Yeah, I guess uh, my, my internet kind of came in for a moment there. Um, so we're talking about incentives at various levels, whether it's for an individual, a company and a region. Is that kind of the idea there? I was kind of bundling up a couple of questions together. And yeah. um, there's been questions about the subsidies that can be offered as well. Yeah. So anything essentially, I think that that uh, says, how can we economically help um, our van pools uh, either come about or how can we help the individual van pullers themselves from an economic perspective, tax breaks, government grants, subsidies, that that kind of uh, nature. Totally. So we, we see van pools that start uh, with without any support uh, where riders are covering the costs themselves. But in the triangle, we're really lucky to be partnering with Go Triangle where they drive down the costs initially with the regional subsidy. Um, that's between $350 to $450 a month. Um, on top of that, we see employers subsidize, uh, which is one option where they could pay a percentage amount, an amount per person, a flat rate for the van pool, or they could pay the entire cost of that and then pre-tax deduct from their employees, which provides a tax break. Uh, the other side of this is we see em employers helping set up flexible spending accounts um, for transit. Uh, that's another option there. Um, but it, it's really, there, there's kind of a couple layers to it. And, and it's depending on what the goals of the company are, uh, the, the work site size, location. Um, but it's, it's the type of thing we see a lot of different options. But the main things are local transit subsidies, employer subsidies, and of course, leveraging that pre-tax uh, code. I think it's 132F. Fantastic. Thank you. And I, I think one of the best ways to explore that conversation, too, is to actually sit down with Chris. And so part of um, when we wrap things up today, we are going to send out a survey and we will encourage um, our participants today to connect with Chris. So we're going to give everyone that opportunity because um, um, it is a very important question. It's one that comes up a lot. It's something that can be dynamic as well. Um, so thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, I appreciate that response. Um, so this one's for Nathan. I think it's, it's time for some real talk, Nathan. Um, a question came in. What are the pros and the cons of daily van pulling with the same people? I, I know some carpool partners, uh, husband and wife, that so won't even ride with each other every day because they drive each other crazy. So tell us a little bit about the pros and cons from your perspective. <laughs> so I think I pretty much covered the pros. I mean, if you look at your household budget, you're depending on how long you, how far your commute is. That's probably one of the higher line items on your home budget. This, depending on the subsidies that are extended from your employer and from Go Triangle, can can just cut that dramatically. That is definitely a pro. Um, wear and tear on your vehicle is reduced uh, significantly. Um, your auto insurance policy can be reduced depending on on your carrier. Um, you know. From a from a con standpoint, um, I don't know that I can really list that that many cons other than you know you have to be aware of the you know some of the personality differences in your van pool. You're always going to have you know a, a variety. So um, I would say just be aware of those. And um, sometimes people, and I know a lot of our folks love uh, to do work. <laughs> Uh, on their way home, they get on their phones and do work on their phones, or they have a podcast they're listening to. 
um, or they have a book they're reading. So they take this time to kind of wind down. Uh, what I call a driveway moment to wind down and get ready to 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 go home. So I can't really name a whole a whole bunch of cons. I, I wouldn't be in the program for ten years if if I did find a lot of cons. And by the way, I'm the primary driver of our van, being the the coordinator. So um, I like to drive. I'm fine with driving, and people like to ride. So it's a it's a very symbiotic relationship. I hope that answers the question. I think it does. I think it's great to hear too, because I, um, I'm, I'm fortunate from my perspective and I get to work with Chris and enterprise and, and I get to hear a lot of the, um, the good stories that have come out of, of the van pulling experience. So uh, I'd say fairly from, from across the board, from my perspective, it's just nothing but positive things to say. So, um, um, that's been exciting to, to see and, and hear. Um, I think we have time for maybe one more quick question and then we're going to wrap things up. Um, so a question that came in is, can you tell us a little bit, and, and maybe this is a Chris question or maybe uh, everyone has their own different take on this, but, um, can van pool participants cancel or leave their van pool at any time? What is the format? What is the structure of, of people kind of coming and going um, kind of logistically from, from your perspective? Yeah, I'm happy to speak to that. So when we talk about this month to month flexibility, uh, we set the, the expectation up front that to leave the van pool, there's a 30 days notice um, in cases where that doesn't have as much of a financial impact on maybe the other riders on that change of ridership. We try to be as flexible as possible. Uh, but this is really to safeguard if there's a group of eight people driving together and two leave, that cost goes up significantly for the folks on there. And we really explain this as an opportunity to work with the riders on that van, as well as the employers, to try and find more folks to fill those seats. No, if we're trying to save money, we don't want anyone's cost to go up without notice. Um, but in the event where it doesn't have a negative impact on the group or the cost of the individuals, we, we can find flexibility. That's, that's our goal. You know, we don't want someone, you know, paying for a service that isn't benefiting them if they're moving out of state or something like that. But oftentimes those changes are kind of uh, spoken about in advance and people know when there's big changes like that coming up. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. So I, I see we're getting pretty close to our time. So I think I am going to um, thank all of our, our panelists. Um, incredibly helpful. A lot of information here. I don't think we got a chance to get to every question. I try to respond to some individuals as best as we could. Um, but yeah, thank you for your responses. We will be following up offline as well for any questions that we didn't get a chance to tackle today. Um, so let me share my screen one more time. I had mentioned a little bit earlier that there's an opportunity to win a $25 gift card. And so we are asking all of our participants today to take a survey. And let me drop this link into chat so everyone can actually click on it. Um, that link I just put into chat for everyone that will take you to our survey. It will uh, ask you about today's session. Uh, it will also give you the opportunity to um, schedule a meeting with Chris. And so we strongly encourage everyone, if you are just looking to have a conversation about a van pool program, learn a little bit more. I know today's been informative, but I think there's probably a lot of questions that uh, develop as you are exploring van pooling for your particular organization and your needs. So absolutely connect with Chris. We want to make sure that happens for you. And this is a good opportunity to do that. And then lastly, here is the contact information for all of our panelists. Thank you all once again. I really, really appreciate your time, all your responses. I know we've used up a good bit of your time throughout the planning efforts, but thank you so much. And thanks to everyone today for attending. Once again, we will have this posted on YouTube in the next 24 to 48 hours or so. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, otherwise, everyone, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Right, take care, everyone. Thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. Bye.